Before we wrap up this unit, I want to quickly do some changes and some house cleaning so that we can leverage some of the things we've learned in this unit. We're going to be building a couple of services and we're going to be cleaning the code up so that we don't have everything in just one file. The typical best practice is to have a separate JavaScript file for each element, each entity in your Angular application. So for instance, we have a controller. The best practice is to have a separate JavaScript file for that controller. Similarly, a service calls for a separate JavaScript file for the service. So we're going to be implementing this as a best practice in this tutorial, and we're going to move some of this logic into those files and into those services. I'm going to start with um, the app value service. All right, so I'm going to have this. It's just one line, I know, but still, there's a value in having that be a separate service. So I'm going to say this is the app name dot service dot js again this is a best practice where you have the name of the file denote what kind of entity it is right so here it is a service so i've created a separate file for it with the name service dot js so i'm going to paste this over here now how do i get hold of this app here i was creating this and i had the app variable as an object over here right it was the angular module now how do i get hold of this over here well i can do that using the alternative syntax to get the module, which is basically app.module without the second argument. Now with this, I have the app, and I'm setting the value on top of it, and that's all that this service file does. It just gets the app and sets the value. Now the other thing I want to do is wrap this inside an ify. If you're not familiar with it, is to prevent these global variables from leaking out into the global namespace. In JavaScript, scopes are function-based, so in order to restrict a variable to a particular scope rather than have a bunch of different globals, you create a temporary function which wraps this up. If you're not familiar with ify at all, I highly recommend you to look at JavaScript for developers course on Java Brains, or you can look it up online. It's a fairly simple concept, right? You wrap something, a piece of code in a function and execute it immediately. And the syntax goes something like this. I have a function which encompasses the code and then I'm going to execute this function immediately. All right, so this is an ify. Now by doing this, I have essentially restricted the scope to this one file. So I'm going to do this for a couple more services. So I did this for the app name service. I'm going to pr remove the factory because we don't really need a factory. We're just going to retain the service. So I'm going to clean this up and um, take this out, well, these two, into a separate file. I'm going to call this app config .service .js. And this is going to be inside NFE2. And since this is uh, just a simple function, I'm going to do this inline rather than have a separate named function for it. All right, now I'm going to take this out and get the app using a similar approach, just this. And then again, wrap this in an ify, which is basically a function around this, and then wrap this function in parentheses and then execute it. Right? It's an immediately invoked function expression. That's what if he is. Okay, we are done with the app config service. Next, we're going to remove the contact controller and make that as a separate file as well. I'm going to get rid of the header and the footer controller. They were, like I said, just for illustrative purposes. So I'm going to take this code. whole controller. I'm going to create a separate file for this and this is going to be the contact dot controller dot js. I just realized I moved it outside the directory. It needs to be inside the directory. I'm going to paste this here. Now this is the whole controller. I'm going to get the app using the same way. So essentially what I'm doing is just breaking this up into multiple files, but 
with the same functionality more or less and I'm going to wrap this in an FE as well. Execute this and then format it a little bit and we have another controller, another entity in its own file. Now since all those things have been removed, app.js is actually fairly lightweight, right? All I'm doing in app.js is initializing the module. You can have something that's global over here for the application, of course, but more or less it's it's fairly light. And all these different entities have the corresponding logic. I'm going to go to index.html and remove the header and the footer again. Like I said, it's for illustrative purposes, so we don't need that here. Now what I do need to do is include all these different scripts into my HTML because right now I'm just linking app.js. I'm going to have to link all those other files, so I'm going to do that now. So the first one is app.config.js appconfig.service.js, sorry. This one is appname.service.js This one is contact.controller.js. All right, now let's see if this works. I'm gonna refresh the page. So we have the view here, and we're able to click, so the controller seems to work fine. Now here's one more thing I wanna do. In the controller, I have this.contacts, and it's this huge list. I don't want this list to be in the controller. I want to take this out and create a separate service for it. Let's say this is a service that gets the contact information by making a REST API call. We haven't covered the REST API call yet, but we'll get to it. But for now, I want this hard-coded list to exist not in the controller, but in a separate service. So I'm going to create that service here. I'm going to call this contact data service. We'll say contact data dot service dot js again notice the convention it's the name of the service dot service dot js copy this over just to get us started and i'm going to call this contact data svc and this is going to be a function that just returns the list of contacts i'm going to say this dot contacts equals and it's going to be that hard-coded list of contacts, which I'm going to pull up from the controller. Take this out and add it to the contact data service. Now it's the service that has this data. And by nature of us declaring it as a service, what Angular is going to do is execute this function as a constructor. And what the object that gets returned is going to have a property called contacts, which has the centralized list. Now, what I need to do is access this service in my controller. How do I tell Angular to inject that service? I will pass it as an argument, and now this service gets dependency injected. And I can access the contacts property by doing something like this, service.property, which is this property over here. So now I'm injecting the service, which gets me all the data, and I'm using that data and setting it to the scope of this controller. So I have, again, broken it out into a separate file. Uh, this hard-coded thing I don't need to do for now. Now let's refresh. And it did not work. Why? Because it's not able to find the service. Guess what I missed? I created a new file, a JavaScript file, but I forgot to add it to index.html. Adding that is important. So I'm going to add this file here. This is contact data.service.js. With that, let's try this one more time. And well, it works. I'm able to click on an entry and see that user's information. So all the data is still there. It's just that it's getting it from a service rather than it being in the controller. All right, so to summarize, what we did in this video was break out some functionality into its own files and wrap them in an iffy. 
and then reference those files in index.html. This is good practice. This is something that's recommended in a production level application. The second thing we did was to take the hard-coded data in the controller and move it to a separate service. And again, this was the contact data.service.js, which returned an object that had a property called contacts, which was this hard-coded list. And the controller took that list from that property and assigned it to this dot contacts like we did before, but rather than the list being available here, it's pulling it up from this injected service. All right, so with this, we've done enough house cleaning work to kind of set the stage for the next unit where we're gonna be looking at REST APIs. We have this hard-coded list now over here. We don't like hard-coded lists. We wanna get this from an API, so we're gonna be looking at that in the next unit.